Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Say good morning, listeners. What's up? Hi, Dad. We have two special <laughs> guests this morning. We have twins. We have three-year-old twins. We have Henry and Ashton. These are Henry's two oldest, I should say, because he just had a younger right. little boy, Hunter. So he's a father of three. That's correct. Say say good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. And if you follow Henry on Instagram, you know he is a proud father of these two NBA bound basketball oh, yeah. stars because they drive their little Audis that they got for Christmas oh, and those. they be balling with their two foot goal. They be like yeah. hitting it. Yeah. So, um, Henry, obviously we know you're a proud father, but how much does it mean to you to be a father? It means everything. Uh, I really live for them. I, I didn't understand when people. When people used to say that before I had kids, I, I couldn't understand, you know, how, how you could feel that way. But once I had kids on my own, it really put things in perspective and it made me realize that I need to set a good example and, and be the best role model I could possibly be. And um, they just a ball of fun. I mean, I, I don't know how guys don't want to be in their kids' lives. It's crazy to me. Um, I mean, they... Many use. They everything. They everything. Yeah. <laughs> Many use. Yep. Yep. What is the the best part of being a father thus far? No, he can take the mic from you. I'd rather talk to him. <laughs> Come on, Henry. He can't answer that question though. Right. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um. Why are we? Of you. Go ahead. You gonna answer? Yeah, I'm father. You can talk much better than that. All right. Um. What's the question again? <laughs> I forgot. I was interviewing Henry the Fourth. Oh, Henry, is Daddy fun? Daddy, yeah. <laughs> is he Ashton? Is Daddy fun? He's he's in his own world. He he, he wants to, to ring the first time bell. What is the what is what has been the best part about being a father thus far? Uh... Giving them... Oh, he's hugging you. Yep. Giving them a better life than I had. And I had a good life. Mm. So I'm trying to make theirs spectacular. I want it to be... Um, you know, when, when when they're older, I want to be bragged on. I want to. I want my kids to say, you know what? I had the best dad that ever lived. And, um, you know, I want them to be the same type of father for their kids you know mm-hmm. when they when they get older you know i'm trying to leave a legacy right here right yeah and speaking of legacies you do that in more more ways than just being a father but we watch them help you with the dogs oh yeah they help so. with everything yeah yeah they help with <laughs> we, the dogs we watch you so wait, wait, if, so, if somebody wants to follow you if y'all want y'all they are the cutest, cutest twins by far so if somebody wants to follow you on facebook instagram or twitter or any of that and get to know the twins as well as ashley and hunter because they're on the other side of the studio as well y'all it's a family affair here in the good life radio show how can we follow you um my instagram is uh at bull blood henry all one word and facebook is henry jolly and my twitter is at bull blood nation at bull, bull blood nation explain that to us um what is bull blood bull blood is the name of my bloodline i've been breeding uh American bullies for the past 16 years. Um, I mean, I started out with the traditional pit bulls for maybe the first three to four years, Mm -hmm. but I wound up um, crossing over to a different breed. And and it's basically an evolution of a a pit bull. You know, it's it's more like a... But it's not. But it's not a pit bull. Right, right. It's more like a... It's more like an English bulldog type of yes. It's like an bull English thing. bulldog yeah. pit bull pit mix, bull but thing. they're not like they don't have they don't have the temperament of the pit bull, do they? They have. Uh, it's like a combination. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's like they they like protective, they're, but they're, they're, the they're house snuggle. dogs. They're laid back. You know, they they um, they're very they're very family oriented. Uh, a ball of fun, <laughs> a ball of energy. So, uh, you know, they're cool dogs. Check them out. The website is www.bullbloodline.com. And I always get people asking me. We were on the lakefront over the weekend, mm-hmm. and uh, people always asking me, what do I do for a living? Because, mm-hmm. you know, they see, you know, nice cars or whatever. But um, I explain to them, I breed dogs. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. You know, I counsel too, but... 
I make. Thank you. All right. You're a jack of two trades. Is that the end of my session? He just <laughs> rang the bell on. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know my my number one business and number one source of income is is my dog. And you started your business pretty early in life. You were a young I was entrepreneur. I was 18. Uh, right out of um, right out of high school. Uh, got my first part time job working at Kids Foot Locker, and I was making five dollars and twenty five cents an hour. And I realized that that was not um, was not adding up and not working out. And so uh, I got my first two dogs as just pets. You know, I wasn't I wasn't thinking about you know anything other than that. I just wanted pets. And then uh, when I made them for the first time, I had ten puppies and I sold them for five hundred dollars a piece in the newspaper, and I made five thousand dollars. You were like, so I started doing the math. I said, man, <laughs> all right. I'm like it's gonna take me. It's gonna take me. It's gonna take me. I mean, a year or so to make five grand working at the at at the rate I was working Mm because you know it wasn't much money. Right. So once I realized that, um, I got with my dad and I, you know, I was living at home still, and I told my dad, I said, look, let me get some more dogs. And uh, I believe I can really turn this into a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so he said, well, I don't like that idea. I don't want you (laughs) with all these dogs at my house. So I said, well, look, what if I give you 8% of whatever I make? He's like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> Look, it's he's, a whole new he, world. He, he, said, but, he opened his mind, huh? Right, he opened his mind, yep, and he opened his heart and his home. So <laughs> right. so uh, once we agreed on that, um, he said, Look, you know, make sure you cut the grass. I don't have to go in the yard and you know, I don't want to step in anything. Yeah, I don't want to step in nothing. You know, I want to you know, make sure you keep the yard nice and tidy. We can go ahead and go forward. So he allowed me to do that. But I kept my part time job for a little bit and um yeah, I stacked my money and I uh, I kept investing in my dogs. I bet I bought. Oh, um, investing in yourself. Imagine that. It, yeah, of course you have to. <laughs> you have to. You know, any any time you're trying to you know promote a brand or start a brand or start a business, you have to invest in yourself. So I kept my part time job for a little bit. Kept investing my money and getting better dogs. And my friends used to make fun of me because I I wouldn't buy like new shoes and I wouldn't go out to clubs and none of that. They're like, man, you live kind of like a old dude but you're 18 19 years old i said look it's gonna pay off later i'm all right mm-hmm. and um but i still had my fun i just wasn't into that stuff so uh, once i turned 22 um i had saved up some money i had excellent credit and uh i said dad hey i'm ready to move out i'm gonna go get me a house he thought i was joking but uh <laughs> two months later i went and, and, and got a full bedroom house and and i turned that into uh, like the Carter on um <laughs> on a uh, on a uh, what is it New Jack City yeah yeah I turned it into the Carter man I, I had dogs everywhere I had uh, rooms in my house designated for for puppies you know I kept everything indoors for small puppies I had a a two car garage there I, I mean it was an operation I had going on going on over there um you know. I, I did my thing. I, and I look how you've grown that. now because you don't just, obviously, and y'all, his dogs aren't, you know, your normal dogs. They are definitely um, unique and very, uh, I, don't, what am, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the exquisite. verb. Exquisite. Exquisite, yeah, I guess. Yeah, exquisite, exotic. Yeah, exotic. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah. He has exotic dogs. So if you are, you know, into dogs or anything, make sure you follow Henry. They're definitely exotic breeds and it's not you know a dog that you can get anywhere they literally have people all over the country in the world that follow his bully so make sure you do that and then he doesn't just have that as well if you are a dog lover and you need to board your pet you're going here there and everywhere he then opened his he uh you know he's branding himself so he took it another step so what do you have now that's in the east we started a pet boarding facility called pet lounge it's in new orleans east it's um Right off uh, Lake Forest and Bullard, mm-hmm. and uh, behind they, that gas station, y'all. Yeah, and, and basically, uh, you know, if people go out of town or they need somebody to watch their dog during the day while they're at work. They can come drop the dog off, and you can customize your kennel for them. You know, if you want to bring some beds, no, but he has TVs and, for yeah. We got dogs. TVs for the dogs. <laughs> Wi-Fi. The dogs. Yeah. I'm gonna bring all my Rottweilers over there. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, we, we got the extra large kennels for those too. Yeah, and uh, they all get yard time. They, you know, 
it's, it's, it's a cool thing. Really cool So if thing. somebody wanted to follow you or they needed some information on Pet Lounge, how do they do that? Pet Lounge, there's a website. It's www.petloungenola.com. Also, you can follow on Instagram. Uh, I believe it's... At Pet Lounge, Pet Lounge Nola. Mm-hmm. Is yep. it Nola too? Yeah. At Pet Lounge Nola. And I will actually put all of our information throughout the course of the show on the Good Life Radio Show. So make sure you follow us there. If you missed anything or you're too slow or, you know, you're not close enough to a pin, make sure you follow us. The Good Life Radio Show at TGL Radio Show, Instagram and Twitter, and the Good Life Radio Show on Facebook. And I will have all of their websites on there as well. So you can see what they do, follow them up, and, you know, get to know us a little bit better. And so finally, how did you get into counseling counseling because dogs and counseling i guess you know you didn't like being around people that much you'd rather be around dogs all right so this is interesting all right check it out so (laughs) i got into counseling because uh i was trying to find myself you know Mm. people always say that and uh i was breeding dogs and everything was good but in my personal life things were not going how i want them to go as far as finding uh a mate Mm-hmm. A significant other had girlfriends here and there, but nothing that I really felt was uh you know next level and so um I didn't like the fact that I would get dirty looks at the bank when I'm depositing money or pulling money out. People would always the bank tellers would say what what's what's this business bull blood what's that and I gotta explain it and I just didn't like the vibe I was getting. Mm-hmm. And then certain girls I was dating, you know, I started to date, you know, like doctors and lawyers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And when they find out what I did for a living, it kind of turned them off in a way. Yeah. And it was kind of silly to me. But but I thought it was real at the time. You know, I guess I wasn't secure within myself. Mm-hmm. And I said, man, you know, I can't, you know, she won't bring me home, but... You know, she's a doctor, and I breed dogs. It just didn't didn't sound like it fit. Do they know how much that business is worth these days? I don't know if okay. they knew at the time, but <laughs> but it, 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 it kind of got to me, and it ate, and it, and it, and it, and it, and it ate at my ego. You mean you have time to spend with your family? Know, you can breed dogs. You can do it all. Ooh. Oh, imagine that. Right, right. Okay. Made more money than them too. Right, <laughs> but, exactly. But so it, it kind of you know started to bruise my ego the dirty looks and the responses i got so i said man you know what i'm a college graduate um maybe i'll go and get a job and so what i did was i i took a break from breeding dogs for a year um was not the best thing for me financially (laughs) but uh i did that and i went and got a job at river oaks hospital and um i started to work with the uh child and adolescent unit Mm -hmm. and i saw that a lot of kids that were coming in they were troubled because of their life at home. Mm-hmm. And I said, man, you know, the kids are not really the problem. It's the parents, man, that are that are bringing these kids in the world and they're not ready or they're just not setting a good example for them. So uh, then I was talking to somebody at, at the hospital and they said, man, why don't you go to uh, grad school and maybe get a degree, you know, a master's degree in counseling? And I said, yeah, I'd like to do marriage and family counseling. Mm-hmm. So um, then I thought about my upbringing. My parents got divorced when I was 11. I love my parents. I think they could have worked through their <laughs> issues, but they didn't. You know, they wound up throwing in the towel. And so I said, man, I'd like to help people stay together. Mm. And if they can't stay together, then, you know, help them work on moving past each other if it came to that. Mm-hmm. So I went to grad school, and and uh, and that was it. I went to grad school, got my master's degree in 2013 in marriage and family counseling, but I wound up getting back into dogs at the same time and um, found my wife right before I even started grad school, oh, so it was cool. So um, yeah, everything worked out. So you have the best of both worlds. Yep. Imagine that. Yes, ma'am. And that's what the good life is all about. So we are here on Relationship Tuesday, and we are getting to know the crew. That is Henry Jolly of Bull Butt Corporation. And he is also our counselor, our resident counselor here at The Good Life. So make sure you stay tuned. Ursula Rochon is next of Rochon Inc., the color gallery and everything that she does, making groceries. Do y'all know what making groceries is? You'll find out when we get right back. Make sure you stay tuned.
Are you satisfied with your current financial position? My name is Kenneth Barnes, President and CEO of KB Enterprises, where we specialize in putting together step-by-step financial action steps for your plan for today and for tomorrow. Whether you're 50 to 85 and need assistance with your final expenses, we have coverage options for every situation. Let us put life back into your finances. Call us today at 504-914-1202. That's 504-914-1202. Carter Business Development delivers. For businesses to compete, they must have access. Let CBD be your bridge for business development services, radio advertising, social media marketing, brand ambassador, outreach, and access. Contact Carter Business Development at 504-400-7127 or email Eileen at TGLRadioShow.com. Carter Business Development creates unfolding opportunities. CBD connects the dots from where you are to where you want to be. Join the good life now with Carter Business Development, 504-400-7127, 504-400-7127. As quoted, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. Let CBD save you time and give you access. Call 504-400-7127, 504-400-7127. Take the steps required for access so you can live the good life too with Carter Business Development. That's 504-400. 7127. Gentilly Italian Pies, home to the $5 Family Happy Hour. Specials on pizza, wings, and drinks, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Gentilly Italian Pie does fresh for the entire family. Salads, pizza, pasta, wings, and oven-baked sandwiches. Gentilly Italian Pie offers lunch and dinner in a new, modern atmosphere surrounded by big screen TVs. Dine in or carry out by calling 504 504- 826-9180 That's 504-826-9180 Relax, have a drink from the fully stocked bar or beer on tap while your order is made from the freshest ingredients Gentilly Italian Pie 4706 Paris Avenue is home where everybody knows your name so bring the family to Paris and Marabou for the $5 Family Happy Hour Tuesday through Thursday 3pm to 7pm That's Gentilly Italian Pie Dine in or carry out That's 504-826-9180. You gotta try the pie. That's the original Italian pie. Located at Paris and Mirabu in Gentilly. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Born with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. With a three-class starter pack, starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Hi, I'm Henry Jolly, your relationship expert and nationally certified counselor. Everyone at some point in their life goes through struggles. I'm a firm believer that people have the ability to will themselves into good situations, but sometimes they may need some assistance. Being a loving husband, father, and successful businessman by having a passion for the counseling profession has allowed me to gain experience with a variety of these struggles. Let's work together to achieve your individual, family, or marital potential. Come and see me at the New Orleans Grove Center, located at 3712 MacArthur Boulevard on the West Bank in Suite 209. You can reach me at 504-259-8671 or by email, which is henry.jolly at yahoo.com. Thanks for your time, and I'm looking forward to working with you soon. in a car accident, the insurance company tried to give me less than I knew I deserved. I called Maurice Reed Jr. He got me $150,000. I'm Maurice Reed Jr. If you got hit in a car accident, call me. 488-HELP. 
WBOK 1230 AM, The People's Station. Tuesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are here on Relationship Tuesday, and we are living the good life. We are here getting to know our crew. You listen to us every week, but do you really know us? Do you know what drives us, what got us to where we are, and exactly why we do what we do? We got to know a little bit about Henry. We met Henry the Fourth and Ashton. They were our first guests, yes, so our their first special guests this morning. And now we're about to jump into Ursula Roshan. She is the newest member of Relationship Tuesday. So let's see exactly what she has going on. I know she is uh, Roshan Inc. And can you just break down exactly what Roshan Inc. is? Because there's a couple different components to exactly what that is. So tell me what that is. Roshan Inc. is something that I started that basically encompasses all of the different hands that I I have myself in a bunch of different little aspects in life. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Warren Buffett that said the average millionaire has seven sources of income. Yes. Oh, I love that. So I'm all about, you know making sure that there are different streams of income and different aspects of life and it's all been tied in under Roshan Inc. So we can find you at www.roshaninc.com. Absolutely. And so give us a little bit about, you know, your history. Um, You know, what's your family life like? How many kids? I have two kids. I have two fabulous kids. One is nine. He is a boy. The other one is 12. Lord have mercy. And she is about to be a teenager. And I can't. (laughs) (laughs) I can't. Is she everything like you? You know what? My mom was right. My mom was totally. You know how your parents always say, I can't wait till you have kids? Yes. She is expensive. (laughs) She likes expensive things. Oh she God. has no job. <laughs> <laughs> she spends all of her time on her phone, which she feels like she's entitled to do because, of course, she pays the bill. Mm-hmm. She's a teenager. Right. Right, of course. You want to know what her first car? What, what she thinks her first Oh, car? okay. What's her first car that you're going to buy? A Bugatti. Oh, really? <laughs> Somebody was telling me that's their child's favorite <laughs> car today. I, I, said, like, hmm. I said, spell it. <laughs> <laughs> You spell it, you can have it. Until then, you can't have it. I don't like spell it. And spell Bugatti. And so I know, obviously, you love your own two kids and your husband, but how did your love of children then turn into the color gallery? Give us exactly what that looks like. I spent almost 10 years in luxury retail, Mm. Um, high-end luxury retail. So Mm -hmm. I was with Louis Vuitton. I had a few stores in D.C. Of course, I moved back home. I wanted to be back home. And I found myself in a place where I felt like I was taking Mm -hmm. from the community instead of giving back. Mm. Um, A lot of my clientele was, you know, NBA players or NFL players, you know, and that kind of thing. And I would, I would, time and time again, I would see young kids, especially black males, come in with this newfound money Mm -hmm. and no knowledge of self. Mm. And they were sitting before me, like spending fifteen and twenty five thousand dollars. Like this is about to make me, you know, this is going to validate my identity. Like now I'm somebody because I'm spending fifteen thousand dollars. And I realized it was time for me to get out of retail. When I started to feel guilty about that, I'm like, wow. I can't, I can't do this anymore <laughs> because this is not going to validate you as a man. And the fact that I'm sitting here and I'm contributing to that. It just makes me part of the problem. Mm. So I took my love for art and my love for children, and you have the color gallery. And so I guess explain your love for art and how that started, and then we'll go kind of back into the the color gallery because it brings it both together. 
I studied art um, ever since I was a child. I went to Xavier. I had a full scholarship. Uh, unfortunately, I shouldn't have left, but I did. I oh, so you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> I had an art scholarship, though. I had a full art scholarship. And John Scott told me, he said, Roshan, he said, if you leave, because my grandmother, God, I love her, but she's like, you know, you come from a family of medicine. We don't, art is a hobby. She was like, art. And if y'all haven't seen (laughs) Ursula's art, I'm not kidding. You have got to see her art. It is absolutely amazing. How can they find you to see your pieces? Roshan Inc. Roshan Inc. Y'all, Roshan Roshan Inc. Inc. for everything. You have got to see her art. I mean, go around the city. And if you've been to Katie's, I'm on the side of Katie's. I'm in a bunch of different hotels. I'm in restaurants. I'm in law offices. Y'all, she's real. (laughs) (laughs) Like she is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know. What was I saying? Are we talking about your love for art and how you grandma brought... Grandma told you to go to medicine. Oh, yeah. Grandma told me to go into medicine. So I left my art scholarship at Xavier and went to Tulane in biology. And John Scott told me I was going to be sorry. Mm. And this is what I'm going to say. I'm not sorry because my luxury retail background set me up to know how to profit an enterprise in art. Mm. Otherwise, I think I'd just be a starving artist. I mean, and how important is that? No, seriously, we talk about that on Mondays all the time. How important is that knowing the business behind what you do? Because a lot of so people important. just know what they do and not how to run the business. I don't think people understand when you say, they're, they're like, oh, you're an artist? Like, in real life? <laughs> like, do you sell it? Right. I'm like, well, I don't have a nine to five, so I guess I'm doing okay. Right. <laughs> like, I right. guess I'm doing all right. right. So how did you pull your love of art? Well, not how did you. You pulled your love of art and your your psychology background and, you know, that study together to do the color gallery with your love for children. Right. So explain to us what the color gallery is because it's a love of labor. Yeah. It, I mean, I noticed an influx in crime returning to New Orleans. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, um, the nature of the criminal has changed. Mm. And I attribute that a lot of it to Katrina and how the kids have been affected and the fact that there really is... There's been no mental health attention given to our children. Um, I mean, you notice any other major disaster in the world, the first thing they're doing, what? They're dropping down somebody that can talk to you. Then they're like, oh, we're going to set up a center. And if anybody has to talk about grief or counseling or whatever. and That's true. We didn't get one of those. They were told to deal with it. Mm. And they've been dealing with it. And this is how you deal with it. I mean, think about it. Like, crime in the city, we've always had an issue with crime in the city. But realistically, I'm going to say in 95, if I was being carjacked and my kids were in the car, I honestly feel like I could have said, look, my kids are in the car. Can I just get my kids and you can have you can have the right. car, my purse, whatever. And they probably would have said, okay, cool. Now, they'll shoot you in the kids. It's a completely different mentality. It's a different pattern of violence. What's crazy is that because we didn't do exactly what you just said, because during Katrina, let's just say first and second graders are now our high school age children who have a mind of their own and their, you know, hormones are going all over. They're trying (laughs) to find themselves and understand their world. And we didn't help. We as a community didn't help them through that grief process. Yes. It was a grief process because realistically, a lot of them lost family members. If they didn't lose family members, they watched other people die. If they didn't watch anybody die, they watched something traumatic. They watched, you know, rape, they watched assault, they watched, you know, the type of trauma that you shouldn't see as a child. Mm. So when we brought them back and you tell somebody to deal with it, the natural aspect of anybody's mind, I mean, you're going to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. So you become numb to those aspects. Well, you can't just become numb. You can't say, I'm going to become numb to sadness, but I'm cool with happiness. Like, once you're numb, you're numb. So we have a generation of kids that are literally dealing with the post-traumatic stress that we've never dealt with. Mm. So how do you... How do you take art and deliver some relief for those children through the color gallery? Because art is a creative release that, I mean, essentially you can get through to any child, even if the child doesn't really want to speak. Mm. Or even if they don't know how to communicate their feelings, they can normally do it with colors. You know what I heard now that you're saying this? I heard a lot of art teachers are sometimes the first ones to know that a child is going through something. You'd be surprised what comes out on paper. They'll deliver it 
in their artwork at school? I always communicate colors to, to kids through emotion. Like, I'm say, well, what color are you feeling right now? Do you feel red? Mm. You know, do you feel blue? Do you feel green? What What do you feel like right now? And show me what that looks like on paper. Or if you, if you went through this experience, how did that make you feel? Illustrate it for me so I can see it. And literally, they may start, like, halfway through saying absolutely nothing and then like midway through the picture they're like crying and sobbing like oh my god I can't and then this happened and then this and you're like oh oh okay well I knew something was in there (laughs) I knew you had to get something out and we just like to point our finger and say oh that's an angry child or you know you're just disruptive but we don't realize I don't even think we say angry kids anymore we just like to we just like to call them bad children we like to label kids or medicate them we always love to medicate kids I know well, because realistically, you have people that say, oh, well, you know, little Johnny doesn't like to focus. Or little Johnny has trouble. Little Johnny is hungry. <laughs> maybe little Johnny only eats at school. Right. Because he doesn't have anything to eat at home. You know, maybe little Johnny's being abused. Well, guess what? If I'm 15 and I've been abused for the last five years, no, I'm not going to focus. But it doesn't need, I need to be medicated either. Right. So, I mean, we, you know, that's a whole other topic. Knowing the Santa, knowing the Santa Maria and Christopher Columbus really is another topic on my list right now. <laughs> it was a whole other topic. <laughs> it's, it's just not over, the over of medicating right our kids. Right, I have to go home and feed my little brother and sister because I have three jobs. Mm. I mean, I have kids like that. I have I have kids that are homeless. Wow. You know, I have kids that literally live on the street. So, how do you expect that child to focus on Shakespeare? When the only thing they can think about is their safety once they leave the school. Some of these kids, the only safe place or the only safe haven they have is school. Mm. Wow. So now that we're dropping all that, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna switch a little bit. You know, as we as we close your segment, give us one of your um, your victories with the color gallery because I know I've seen them on on your social media recently. So we'd like to you know talk about one of your victories. One of my most recent students, who is actually a senior, will be attending Xavier in the fall. Yay. I'm very proud of her. So we're looking to see if now she'll get a scholarship. And I know you you went you went with her to that meeting as well. Not in the I, meeting, yeah, but you went. And I you, took you her to the her meeting, her, right? So you don't just. I mean, you know, you really connect with the with the kids. A lot of these kids call me at like two and three and four o'clock in the morning mm. because that's. I mean, realistically, like, that's when their mind is wandering, and that's when they want to do the things that they shouldn't. <laughs> I had a call at 2 o'clock in the morning one time, and a kid said, look, I, I, oh, Miss Roshan, are you sleeping? And I'm like, well, normally, 34 I years old, be. I would be sleeping at 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, but what do you need? You're calling me at 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. And he said, you know, somebody disrespected him at school, and his boys went and got him a gun, and he was going to go kill this guy. But as soon as his boys pulled up, he was like, well, what would Miss Roshan do? Mm. And I was like, oh, that's kind of like, what would Jesus do? <laughs> I think I pre- <laughs> makes me kind of well, cool. But you know what? Maybe you were sent as an angel. Obviously, you were sent Aww. as an angel. No, seriously. God works through us, through people. Open your minds to living differently in the world, y'all. And that's exactly what the Color Gallery does. So how can they get involved with the Color Gallery? Can't they go on Roshan Inc. as well? As well? Um, you can get to it through Roshan Inc. or the thecolorgallery.org. And it is a nonprofit, so if you would like to go and donate, you can do that online. Y'all, our children are our future, and she works with our kids. You know, she gives them different perspectives, and she gives them, you know, shows them that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So if you're interested in, you know, donating to the Color Gallery or learning just a little bit more about Ursula, make sure you follow her. What's your social media? You Roshan, U R O C H O N, as in Nancy. <laughs> you Roshan. <laughs> make sure you follow her at uh, Roshan Inc. RoshanInc.com because that is a good life. We will be right back with Dr. Brian Turner of the Relationship Tuesday crew. Make sure you stay tuned. This will be fun, y'all. We'll be right back. Carter Business Development delivers. For businesses to compete, they must have access. Let CBD be your bridge for business development services, radio advertising, social media marketing, brand ambassador, outreach, and access. Contact Carter Business Development at 504-400-7127 or email Eileen at TGLRadioShow.com. Carter Business Development creates unfolding opportunities. CBD connects the dots from where you are to where you want to be. 
Join the good life now with Carter Business Development. 504-400-7127. 504-400-7127. As quoted, a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a clock to save time. Let CBD save you time and give you access. Call 504-400-7127. 504-400-7127. Take the steps required for access so you can live the good life, too, with Carter Business Development. That's 504-400-7127. Hi, I'm Henry Jolly, your relationship expert and nationally certified counselor. Everyone at some point in their life goes through struggles. I'm a firm believer that people have the ability to will themselves into good situations, but sometimes they may need some assistance. Being a loving husband, father, and successful businessman by having a passion for the counseling profession has allowed me to gain experience with a variety of these struggles. Let's work together to achieve your individual, family, or marital potential. Come and see me at the New Orleans Growth Center, located at 3712 MacArthur Boulevard on the West Bank in Suite 209. You can reach me at 504-259-8671 or by email, which is henry.jolly at yahoo.com. Thanks for your time, and I'm looking forward to working with you soon. Gentilly Italian Pies, home to the $5 Family Happy Hour. Specials on pizza, wings, and drinks, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Gentilly Italian Pie does fresh for the entire family. Salads, pizza, pasta, wings, and oven-baked sandwiches. Gentilly Italian Pie offers lunch and dinner in a new, modern atmosphere surrounded by big screen TVs. Dine in or carry out by calling 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. Relax, have a drink from the fully stocked bar or beer on tap while your order is made from the freshest ingredients. Gentilly Italian Pie, 4706 Paris Avenue is home where everybody knows your name. So bring the family to Paris and Maribou for the $5 Family Happy Hour, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Gentilly Italian Pie. Dine in or carry out. 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. You gotta try the pie. That's the original Italian pie. Located at Paris and Mirabee in Gentilly. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Born with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. With a three-class starter pack, starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Are you satisfied with your current financial position? My name is Kenneth Barnes, President and CEO of KB Enterprises, where we specialize in putting together step-by-step financial action steps for your plan for today and for tomorrow. Whether you're 50 to 85 and need assistance with your final expenses, we have coverage options for every situation. Let us put life back into your finances. Call us today at 504-914-1202. That's 504-914-1202. When I got hit in a car accident, the insurance company tried to give me less than I knew I deserved. I called Maurice Reed Jr. He got me $150,000. I'm Maurice Reed Jr. If you got hit in a car accident, call me, 488-HELP. WBOK, 1230 AM, The People's Station. Good life with me, Eileen. We are here on relationships.
Relationship Tuesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are back on Relationship Tuesday. Get to know the crew. We are getting to know the crew this week, and we have our last crew member, but of course not the least. We have Dr. Brian Turner. He is a clinical psychologist. He is a black psych professor at Xavier University, XU, and he teaches our children. Y'all, there is a common denominator of children on this show and people loving to give back and help. Henry had his twins here. You know, his reason for going back to, to counseling was he wanted to help families. Roche, uh, Roshan. <laughs> Ursula, you know, gives back to kids, and, and you do that as well. Don't you, Dr. Turner? You do that. That with our, and look, it's funny at different levels of you know children's lives. Like you kind of pass them on to him. Yes, when, I'm done, him. <laughs> when you're done, you pass them to him. <laughs> so we have Dr. Turner in the studio with us. Dr. Turner, how did you get started in psychology? Like, when did you get bitten by the bug? Like, how did that happen? So, I walked into the field of helping people mainly um, growing up when I was traversing the city going to and from school, my biggest questions were, why do I see so many people who seem competent and capable struggling with everyday decisions and mm. issues and obstacles? And so um, the fortunate piece of attending a school like Isidore Norman was I was exposed to a lot of different careers and opportunities and people, and I came to understand what mental health and psychology was, and that for the most part, people thought, you go see a psychologist when you're crazy, and that's a loose term to describe people who are struggling with daily life stuff. But for the most part, people go see psychologists for everyday things, as Henry said, as Ursula alluded to, relationships, family problems, decision making, um, in college, just being homesick, you know, and not mm-hmm. understanding how to deal with certain processes. So I really settled into the idea of mental health and psychology in really sixth grade. Really? Yeah. I was I was um You had that many crazy people around? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, we, we we live in New Orleans and all you gotta do is go to two Mardi Gras and you'll catch it. So <laughs> but but I think what happened was um I just was in a position, um, I think, as, as, as can be said, I grew up without my dad being a formal presence in my home. And I had great older brothers and uncles and, you know, who just really poured into me. And so I, I kind of used books. And, you know, I was that kind of, until I really got into sports, I was kind of that nerdy kid who just was cool. You a nerd? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's really? pictures that cannot be displayed in my mother's home. <gasps> We're going to so, find them. Oh, no. I've, I've <laughs> We're going to find them. I've destroyed all the pictures that are all gone. They're in the lock, they're in the locked away. No, they're in the locked away safe. She don't know. I went through the house one time <laughs> and I cleaned out all of the pictures. But but yeah, I accepted it because I, I was my mom gave us what we needed and, and it wasn't until later in life that I had to pay for what I wanted. <laughs> but but along that path it just really was, was was thinking, how do I how do I do this? And so like I said, going to Newman really exposed me to some things and really found that, that people who were very competent and capable just Stuff stumps them sometimes, and and it really um and and I I will say although most people believe that people going to helping professions have their own issues that just wasn't my case I I, I was always a happy person always enjoyed life I don't know you about know that. I'm just joking well that's what, that's what I say I, I keep wondering if if there's something I'm missing but but I just always enjoyed helping people even throughout when I was at Southern when I was at Jackson State and and even now like the organizations I'm involved with some of the other things I do um I can I can turn down a lot of money because I do well enough with what I do that I don't chase money and so um, one Mm, of my models yeah one of my models to my mentees and they can probably verbatim to give it to you is do something so well that you wouldn't have to get paid for because you love it so much but you do it so well that you get paid well for it so so I really you know try to practice that and so yeah that that was what it was about and so um got to southern um which was weird because I was the first guy coach Richardson said ever asked to meet with the department head Mm. so I was like yeah I need you to bring the department head you're recruiting me if you want me then I want to know what can I do with a degree from southern and um 
the department had came with a great conversation and I actually shout out to one of my mentors Dr. Reginald Rackley still he's not a department head at, at Southern and Baton Rouge um, and we stay in contact but he really put me on a good path and actually he I started working for State Farm mm-hmm. he actually called me one day and said hey you gonna go back to school and I was like no nah, I'm good I'm working making my 35000 a year at State Farm I'm single no <laughs> kids I'm good he's like nah you're going back to school and so I went back to school <laughs> um, and, and that was probably one of the best decisions I ever made in terms of leaving State Farm and, and taking my career and my life in my own hands. So when you did that, what made you choose um, the psychology profession? Did were, did people always kind of come to you with your with their problems, or were you just? I mean, because you're a very easy person to talk to. I, I can't. You know, students come to my office and I say, Doc, I think I want to be a clinical psychologist because all my friends come to the problems. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I remember just being that person that was a good friend. Mm. And, and another mentor of mine actually told us we were, we were having a um, – a really interesting evening a bunch of us and we were drinking and we were in grad school talking about research and he says you know what man y'all gonna be good y'all gonna be great he's like where'd that come from he's like cause cause like the best people make the best psychologists you're a great listener thank you and so he kind of put that out there and so what I've noticed is um, across friends that have gone through the program and that I've met through other places um, I find the best people like they're the most caring people they love you they care for you they're authentic they're intentional um and so i try to practice those things so even people that i have fallen outs with i can email them phone numbers or information they want people who i who i think they know they did me wrong i I let it slide and they can still ask me for help and and i keep it moving i I can't block my blessings so i've always been that person i'm gonna do what i gotta do and if me and you fall out i'm still gonna do what i have to do I'm learning forgiveness, so I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that you say that yeah. and that you exude it. We're, Ursula and I are learning that right now. But you know what? It's not always easy. No. Yeah. Well, time out. It's, oh, oh, I don't want to go sideways, but I don't think it's something that you don't even know that you didn't do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I think that's like the number one thing. Uh-huh. And when you were talking about that on Friday's show, I was like, I didn't even realize I wasn't even doing it. Uh-huh. I didn't even realize that. I, I would just mm-hmm. wouldn't, I wasn't even conscious of it. But that's that also why I have a hundred pound heavy bag in my playroom so that I can hit it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that helps to be able to hit the heavy bag. But you know what? Speaking of not even knowing that things exist and deflecting them, we had a conversation a week ago or maybe a week and a half ago about why, especially people in our community, deflect and don't like to acknowledge that we have issues or or need to have conversations or honestly they really just don't even come up yeah. and we just act like it's just something we can do without yeah. why have why is that such an issue i think for all of us but we specifically see it in our community so much i give two sides to this and actually it's pretty a uh, pretty interesting conversation actually we're gonna i'm gonna start a research project this summer looking at um mental health in the black community and college campuses so we're going to do some significant work to try to dig into that right and that's one because um i had a good conversation a couple weeks ago in the organizational setting where we do not integrate cultural competency into into a lot of our helping professions training Mm. programs whether it be medical mental health pharmacy um you name it law there's just a lot of professions where working with people who are culturally different is not ingrained in the programs and what students and professionals are taught. So even though I have MD, a PhD, or a law D, a JD, there's not a lot of conversations. And some programs do it, so I'm not going to say all, but but vastly a lot of programs assume that you're just here to get this service, and that's all that matters. The flip side of that is, once again, specifically in our communities, that there have been a lot of hurts and pains at the hands of these professions. Mm -hmm. So when you have a history of being denied access to legal rights, denied access to medicine that works, denied access or you've been ostracized because you're black and you have a mental health issue, when you don't get 
appropriate treatments just because you're black or Latino or Asian, then then it's a two sided kind of coin of I'm not going to seek help from these people because they keep making me seem crazy. And if the professionals are not being taught to be culturally sensitive, then we're going to continue to clash. And, and I don't blame either side, but at some point we, we all have to work together. And I feel I kind of stand in that gap because um, and I, I don't wear my earrings as much, but I remember when I first kind of finished grad school and now most times and I would show up to do therapy and a button down and slacks or jeans, earrings. And a lot of times younger people would feel very comfortable with that because I was not off putting, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't appear to be, I mean, honestly, people say you don't look like Sigmund Freud. They would expect the <laughs> but older. But once you open your mouth, you do. I love it. <laughs> So it's like, you don't look like Sigmund Freud. You make me feel comfortable. And, and, and that was interesting and intriguing because, once again, it's the presentation of a solution mm-hmm. that, that it's, yes, it does matter the box it comes in. It does matter the presentation. And what I found was that we have to ensure that when people get help, it's in the way that they want to get help. Mm. What I enjoy about you when, you know, we have listeners call in or people have issues or, you know, they a lot of times they send us stuff from fe- Facebook and, you know, and y'all, honestly, that's how, you know, sometimes we ask our questions is, you know, send us information through our social media. We will definitely respond to it is that you meet the person presenting the question where they are and that's so very important rather than you know coming from maybe a judgmental point of view i guess yeah well you know it's it's interesting having not lived in new orleans for about 20 years and having to do therapy and work in communities where you know if i talk like this i sound real different (laughs) and so i realized that uh you got to let people be them. Mm. And and that's where you start to find people will, will accept what changes need to be. My joke oftentimes is that clinical psychologists and mental health professionals, the job of that individual is in effect to get people to do what they say they want to do, but they don't want to do it. I say I want a better relationship, but I want to keep dating the same person. I say I want different relations with family, but I'm not going to set boundaries. I say I want to change how I feel about myself, but I'm not going to engage in the things that will actually change that. So, you know, definitely it's like, yeah, well, if you want to, you know, be happy, then what makes you happy? Well, I want to do this. Okay, well, what's stopping you? Mm. Well, let's figure out what's stopping you. And then you can't have any more boundaries. You can't have any barriers stopping you. So, yeah, I, I think that's the other part of it is that I don't. I don't have any reason to judge anybody. You know, what, who am I? So. I think you're kind of cool, so we'll keep you around. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. <laughs> so if somebody wanted to follow you, if they wanted to get some information, or if their child is going to Xavier, please make sure you take his <laughs> his black site class. I'm not kidding. Black You'd be like, you're Dr. Turner. Yes, he is. Make sure your child takes his class. So Dr. Turner is available. <laughs> Limited therapy because I'm not really doing individual but we're working on that aren't we yeah yeah this summer is supposed to be some changes in and around that and like ursula said though i make my hustle so that's the other thing that growing up in new orleans teaches you i got like a couple of different things i do so um if you really want to see me if you want to bring me out you can always hit me up on facebook because that's where everybody is but my webpage is dr turner speaks dot wordpress dot com you can see the work i'm doing in terms of research you can actually request me i actually have a team of consultants that we we actually will come out and do talks we can put together programs for you um and then my clinical work is there as well so that's dr turner speaks dot wordpress and we're going to put that on our yeah. social media as well dr yeah. turner speaks dot wordpress yeah i have to say um you know i don't do it necessarily for the money but if you got money i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you can you have you to pay energy it. too I, I do energy sprint <laughs> yeah then i got you know other responsibilities and things i want to do so so yeah you can reach me anyway any way you can and, and i'll help out so Thank you, Dr. Turner. We appreciate that. Y'all, we are getting to know our co-host this week. It's been really exciting. You know, I'm learning things about them as well as you. But I think it makes the the good life exactly what it is. It it redefines us. We're opening each other's minds to living differently in the world. We learned about Kenneth and Telly yesterday. We learned about Henry, Ursula, and uh, Brian today. We'll be learning about everybody on every day. And Friday, OT will be interviewing me. Oh, so yeah. this will be very interesting. Oh, yeah. I have never been on the other side of the coin, so I'm a little bit nervous. But we will see. That's what the good life is all about. Opening your mind to living differently in the world. Redefine yourself and exactly what that looks like. And we're out. Aye.
Are you satisfied with your current financial position? My name is Kenneth Barnes, President and CEO of KB Enterprises. Where we